So first of all, how should you practice improvisation? Well, my advice is that you keep things really simple, that you start in one key, and we're going to take the 251 in C major. That's going to be a D minor 7 chord, going to a G dominant 7 chord, ending on a C major 7 chord. So that's the major 251 in the key of C major. And most jazz songs are made up of this major 251, just played in different keys. Sometimes you'll get the full three chords, other times you'll just get a 2-5, other times you'll just get a 5-1. But most jazz songs, their structure is based around the 251. So for that reason, it makes most sense to practice our improvisation over the 251. Unless you have any better ideas, I recommend you just start by practicing over the 251, and we're going to hold things still within the key of C major. Holding things still in one key is a very good idea when it comes to anything composition related, because it helps you to keep track of which ideas you've already experimented with and which ideas you haven't explored yet. So we're going to take the 251 in C major. And one variation is sometimes I make it a 2-5-1-6 because this chord progression actually loops around on itself. So you go 2-5-1 and then you go to an A dominant 7 chord and that's the 6 chord which resolves back down a 5th to the 2 chord. So the 2-5-1-6 chord progression is nice for practice because it loops back around on itself. So you might want to do 2-5-1-6 two, five, one. You can keep repeating that. So two, five, one, six, and then you could go two, five, one, and then you'd end on the one chord. And also when you practice improvisation, have sheet music handy which you can write down your best ideas with. You don't have to remember all of this stuff, you want to explore but you want to write down your best ideas because you might want to come back and really ingrain some of those best ideas later. Okay, so my next recommendation is to focus on chord tone soloing. So chord tones are the root third, fifth and seventh of the chord. So if you have a C major seven chord, then the chord tones are going to be C, E, G and B. Or if you had a C minor seven chord, the chord tones would be different. They would be C, E flat, G, B flat. Or if you had a C dominant seven chord, chord tones would be that's right, C, E, the major third, G, the fifth, and B flat, the minor seventh. And I would say about 80% of jazz piano improvisation is focused around the chord tones. So each time the chord changes, our chord tones will change as well, so our notes in our solo will naturally change. So let's take a 2-5-1 in C major. For the D minor 7, which four notes will we use? That's right, D, F, A, and C, the root third, fifth, and seventh of D minor 7. For G dominant 7, we'll use G, B, D, and F. And for C major 7, we'll use C, E, G, and B. and so on. Now I'm actually going to add one more note, which is the ninth. Even though the ninth isn't really considered a chord tone, it's more of the extended harmony, it is still an excellent note to add in to this technique. So then you're actually using the root third, fifth, seventh, and ninth of every single chord. And in pretty much every case, it's going to be a natural ninth. So for C major seven, you would play C, E, G, B, and add a major ninth. Just count up a whole step from the root to find the ninth. If it was a minor seven chord, same ninth. And for a dominant seven chord, same ninth. If you're feeling more advanced, then you can do a flat nine. That's also nice. But in most cases, I'm using a natural ninth. So let's apply this to our 251. Five notes over D minor 7 are going to be D, F, A, C, and E. 
then we'll go to G dominant 7, our five notes are going to be G, B, D, F and A. Then over C major 7, our five notes are going to be C, E, G, B and D. So that's really nice, we get five notes over each chord. And then just to be thorough, if we do a 2, 5, 1, 6 and we have this A dominant 7 chord, we're going to have A, we're going to have C sharp, we're going to have E and G. And this is actually a chord where I would like to play a flat 9, B flat. It just sounds better in this context, the 2, 5, 1, 6. I would use a flat 9 in this context. You can do the natural 9 as well, but I tend to enjoy this flat 9 in this case. So this is the sound of chord tone soloing, and the nice thing about it is it uses the same brain work which you've already done to find your left hand chords. So if you're playing a D minor 7, well you've already figured out the notes in your left hand, so it doesn't really require any more to play those same notes in your right hand. It's the same brain work, so once you've figured out the notes for your left hand, you're using those same notes in your right hand. Okay, so next we're going to look at approach patterns. Now, approach patterns go perfectly with chord tone soloing. And what an approach pattern is, is it's a melodic shape which precedes usually a chord tone. So say we have this D minor seven chord, we can proceed the root, third, fifth, and seventh with a whole series of approach patterns. Now, the most simple and probably most effective approach pattern I can show you is called the half step below approach. So we're going to proceed any of these chord tones with a half step below. So C sharp can proceed D. F can be preceded by E. A can be preceded by G sharp. And C can be preceded by B natural. Then we go to G dominant seven, we can do the same again. Take any of the chord tones and you can proceed these with a half step below. And again for C major seven, just take the chord tones, C, E, G, B, and you can proceed any of these notes with a half step below. So C can be preceded by B, E natural can be preceded by E flat, and G can be preceded by F sharp, and B natural can be preceded by B flat. Now you've probably noticed that some of these approach patterns take you out of key. They take you chromatically out with this C sharp, this G sharp, this E flat, this B flat. But in this context, that is absolutely fine. These half step below approaches actually sound really sophisticated, especially when they take you out of scale. So the half step below approach pattern is the place I would start. That's my probably favorite approach pattern. It's just so simple, it's not tricky to do. Again, you're just finding the chord tones and then you're proceeding any of those chord tones with a half step below. But there are all sorts of other approach patterns. You can do what's called a chord scale above approach where you take any of these chord tones and you approach them from the note above. However, in this case, you actually have to be aware of which scale you're in. So if we're playing a 2-5-1 in C major, then over all three chords you can play C major scale. Because all three chords are taken from C major scale. So if you want to do chord scale above, you would approach any of these notes with the note from the scale that's above. So it's going to be all of the white notes in this case.
And then there are other approach patterns where they really get more sophisticated in working backwards from a chord tone and playing the surrounding notes. You get sort of patterns like this. So say we're targeting D here, above a D minor seven. There's all sorts of patterns that you hear. And really the sky is the limit. So these are actually called enclosures, when you get these neighboring notes which form a pattern around your target note, which is usually going to be chord tone. And these are just patterns which you precede the chord tone with. It's like working backwards. It adds on some notes. And then once you've played that, you usually resort to chord tone soloing. Now to go with this lesson, I've actually put together some sheet music where I've notated some of my favorite licks over the 251 and the 2516. I've annotated all of the techniques so you can really understand what I'm doing. Plus I'll include some techniques which we probably won't have time for in this lesson. So to download that sheet music for free, just click on the link below. So my favorite approach pattern which I recommend you start with is the half step below approach. Go away, practice the chord tone soloing, and practice preceding some of these notes with a half step below. And a little detail on that, it's good to place the chord tones on the down beats, the strong beats, so the beats one, two, three, four, and then usually you're trying to put the approach notes on the off beat, so the one and, the two and, the three and, so that way you're playing the sort of dissonant notes on the weaker beats, the off beats, the one and, two and, three and, four and. Okay, so next let's talk about rhythm. Now most of the time in improvisation, you're mostly playing eighth notes. One and, two and, three and, four and. So that's going to be most of the solo. Now to keep things interesting, you need to add some variety to your rhythms. One of the easiest ways you can do this is to add a triplet to each line. A triplet is where instead of playing two eighth notes per beat, you're going to play three triplet eighth notes in the same space. So instead of playing one, two, you're going to play one, two, three. So if I play the chord on one and then I start on the second beat, I'm going to play one, two, three, and it's going to be a triplet. So one, two, on the beat two I'm playing triplets. So. So I'm trying to add a triplet to each line. The triplet goes well at the beginning of the line, or it sounds good in the middle of lines. So there I place the triplet in the middle of the line. I started with just eighth notes, but there I played a triplet, one, two, three. and then you go back to eighth notes. So my next improvisation tip is to try and mimic speech. 
That's what improvisation is. It's like small talk, and it's designed to sound a lot like us talking. So when we have conversations, we talk for a while. Then we take breaks. Why do we take breaks? So that we can take a breath. You need to have breaths in your improvisation. You don't want to just keep playing eighth notes forever. And what happens after we take a breath? Usually when we start the next sentence, we change register. So if we've ended down here, when we start the next phrase, we might start in a different register. Like this, then we take a breath, we might start our next phrase by coming down an octave. We'll take a breath. Then I'll start my next phrase up an octave. So this is a simple trick you can do. It sounds very authentic, it sounds natural because it mimics speech. But when you finish a line, take a breath and then change octave. Go up an octave and start your next line up here. Then you take a breath and change octave, either by going up or going down. So when I'm improvising, that's one of the things I'm thinking about. When I end a line down here, it's almost natural for me to jump up the octave and start my next line up. Now another good principle to use in your improvisation is to end on resolved notes. In particular, to end your lines on the root third or fifth of the chord. So if you have a D minor seven chord and you're about to end your line, try to end it on D, F, or A. It's not a rule, but it's a good guideline. It sounds more confident most of the time if you end a line on one of these notes, whichever way you want to do it. And that sounds more confident usually than ending a line on the fourth, or the sixth, or the ninth, or even the seventh. So that's not a rule, it's just a guideline, but again, it mimics speech, because usually when we talk, we end our sentences sounding resolved. So C major seven, ending on the root, or I could go, Any of these three notes is a good note to end your improvised lines on. Now to help you even more with improvisation, I've notated a whole series of jazz piano licks and lines which I've written over the 251 and the 2516. So if you like these sorts of techniques which I'm using, well I've notated a whole series of them. You can download this sheet music for free just by clicking on the link below. 